uh, I was saying, yes, this, this scenario. So we, we've got some sort of feature scenario where we have a, a camera uh, with a SIM card, which is over here. It's red, just the red antenna of the camera. It's a red antenna back here, for those of you who can't see. Then uh, there's the TV, which also has a SIM card, of course. Green, green TV over there. And then with the base station out there, which is uh, blue, um, some in the distance. So the, the idea is that uh, you know, you, you, you've you gone on holiday, you've taken lots of photos, and you go visit your friend, and you say, hey, let's look at my holiday photos. And of course, your friend goes, oh, no. <laughs> but then he says, okay, eventually, yes, let's do it. But instead of looking at your little you know, two-inch screen of the camera, let's show it on my 40-inch flat screen, whatever, TV thing. So that's, that's and you want to sort of put the, the, the pictures from your camera onto, onto the screen. Um, so if I backtrack a bit, uh, Currently, so we, what we have is, uh, so one of the things that we say is when, when you run uh, this D2D, business, you, you sort of save resources. And that's been something that's been really hard to sort of quantify. I mean, maybe it's power, maybe it's, you know, codes, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, different things. So what we try to do is try and find something a bit more tangible that, that we can see that we are saving, that we are, we are um, improving on. And what we did was we thought we'd build uh, a TDMA system, just for the heck of it. <laughs> So, so basically what we have is a system where we have time slots and different devices are, are allocated time slots. And we try to show that you know, if you have no D2D, then you use you know, X time slots and you have D2D, you use you know, X minus five or whatever, some, some reduction of this number of time slots. So that, that's sort of our resources. So it's not oil or human capital or whatever, but it's time slots. <coughs> and to do that, um, we had to build a TDMA system. So uh, our, our base station, which is over there, the blue guy, that guy basically sends out a, a pilot every 10 milliseconds. It sort of comes at this point. And all the other devices, they sort of listen to this. And, and once they hear the pilot, then they have a, this, they're synchronized to it. So basically, we have an over-the-air synchronization that's, that's running here right now. Uh, well, actually not yet, but it will be soon. Um, and once the base station allocates the, 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 the pilot, uh, sends out the pilots and the other guys are synchronized, and they have this concept of a, time, of a frame and the 10 time slots and things like that. <coughs> So, um, on the screen, you can see uh, you have basically sort of a green column, which is representative of the TV. You have the red tall column, which is meant to be the, the camera. And you have the blue, which is the, the base station there. Uh, and we've got some, some curves and things that, I will, that you will see stuff on as well. And maybe I'll come back to that a bit later. So right now, on the top row, this is basically the warp drive that I was telling you about. Um, maybe there's not much to see right now because I just cleared it. but. Um, it sort of shows the you know, times and number of packets received and things like that. And it sort of gets refreshed every couple of seconds. So at some point, there you go. So it gets refreshed. So that's basically when an Ethernet frame came from the warp board and to this warp drive thing and updated it. <coughs> okay, so what we do now is uh, we, we, we fire up the base station and we say attach. <coughs> So now the base station sort of runs as a base station. Now it's sending up the beacon every 10 milliseconds. And the base station also does some sort of resource uh, management. So basically it says this first slot, let's use it as a downlink control channel. So that's how it communicates control signals to the, the devices. And correspondingly, you need an uplink control channel over there. So that's slot number five. So now the base station has sort of allocated these. <coughs> so now you're at your friend's house, and after you've negotiated about watching the the, the, the camera, uh, the, the pictures and stuff. So your friend turns on the TV. Uh, so basically, it sends a message up to the base station, uh, saying, you know, I'm the green TV. I would like to connect to the network. And the base station says, yes, you are allowed to connect. You've paid your bills. And then it allocates some slots, some resources for this TV. So now the TV has one slot for sending uplink traffic and one slot to receive downlink traffic. So this sort of connection is possible for the TV. And similarly for the camera, you do the same thing. Camera does an attach request, and then sends some messages to the base station, and the base station responds with some slots for the camera at some point that you. So now your system is completely up and running. These guys, both your camera and your TV are on the network, and things are ready to roll. These these uh, power levels are these are basically power levels <coughs> uh, received at the base station. So these slots are coming from the base station, basically. So it's the system power level. <coughs> So now you can start sending your pictures from, from the phone to the TV. Um, we don't have any fancy video application, but what we have is a really cool app, which I, it's, it's a real-time streaming text application. 
uh, which you can send in the uplink. So this is basically a stream of text. Each line is <coughs> one packet, one UDP packet. Um, it's going, now this is going in the uplink. So basically from the camera, it's now going over the air to the base station and coming back down in the downlink to the green guy. So this is meant to be your, your images being uploaded from your, from your camera up to the TV. And similarly, there's probably going to be a back channel as well, I guess. So maybe your, your TV needs to acknowledge or something, so you need traffic in both directions. And so this is now all going over the air, over our TDMA system. So now, now, now we sort of theorize, right? That the base station can sort of see that, okay, hang on, wait a minute. I've got, I've got two guys in my cell, a red guy, a green guy. And they seem to be talking to each other, as you can see the traffic going through them. Why can't they talk directly? But the, the base station, in fact, no one really knows what's in between here, right? We don't know whether there's a, you know, a brick wall here, or whether they are physically in contact with each other, or whether the green guy is actually over there, or, or, or whatever. So now we need to try and figure out how we can talk directly. Um, and what we do is, the, 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 the way we do, or what we, we propose is that um, the base station can send a message, a control message to this guy, telling him instead of listening on this one, which you normally do, you try listening on this one. So maybe you can hear his, his uplink directly. Um, so So basically, the green guy does some measurements, and then he reports it back to the base station, and you get some numbers there. Basically. This was the, the report going up to the base station, telling, saying what he heard. And the base station can then sort of compare, because the base station said this, and it's heard the report from this guy, and can sort of say, okay, maybe these guys can talk directly. So, but right now, I've, I've sort of disabled the, the, the DVD mechanism. <coughs> so we try it again. Oops, Oops that didn't work well. Oh, maybe it did. So basically the, the, the green girl reported some numbers and then the base station concluded, okay, you can hear directly. 